Hello, friends. Welcome to Science Talk. I am your host, Jim Essa. And um, I want to share with you uh, an article that was just published a little over a month ago, about, about six weeks ago or something like that. And as you can see here, marine heat waves in the Siberian Arctic Seas and adjacent region. And it's an article that is published uh, on the NDPI website. Is the URL. L, you can see up there. I will, of course, leave the URL in the, in the comments section uh, below the video. So what we have here, we basically, it's a group of Russian uh, scientists. So the uh, scientists here are uh, Elena Golubiva, Marina Kranova, Gennady Platov, Dina Lakshina, and Marina Tarkanova. So let's look through the abstract here, and then we'll look through, there's about 19, 20 figures here. We won't look through all of them, but there's some very interesting ones in here. And the abstract is chock full of information here. So we use a satellite-derived global daily sea surface temperature, SST data set, with a resolution 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 degrees to analyze interannual changes in the Arctic shelf sea from 2000 to 2020, Arctic Shelf uh, Seas, right? The Kara, Laptev, East Siberian, and then moving over uh, to the Chukchi, basically on the other side of the Bering Strait, straddling Russia and Alaska. And so they looked at the annual changes in, for those 20 years and to reveal extreme events and sea surface temperature distribution Results show that the second decade of the 21st century for the Siberian Arctic seas right, turned significantly warmer than the first decade. And the increase in SST in the uh, Arctic Ocean, in the Arctic seas, could be considered in terms of marine heat waves. Analyzing the spatial distribution of heat waves and their characteristics, we show that from 2018 to 2020, the surface warming extended to the northern deep water region of the Laptev Sea in the region from 75 degrees to 81 degrees north latitude. To reveal the most important forcing for the northward extension of the marine heat waves, we use three-dimensional numerical modeling of the Arctic Ocean based on a sea ice ocean model forced by the NCEP NCAR reanalysis. NCAR is, of course, a re reference to uh, uh, NCAR out of Boulder, uh, Colorado. The simulation of the Arctic Ocean variability from 2000 to 2020 showed marine heat waves and their increasing intensity in the northern region of the Kara and Laptev Seas, closely connected to the disappearance of ice cover. A series of numerical experiments on the sensitivity of the model showed that the main factors affecting the Arctic sea ice loss and the formation of anomalous temperature north of the Siberian Arctic Sea are equally thermal dynamic effects of the atmosphere. Numerical modeling allows us to examine the impact of other physical mechanisms as well. Among them were the state of the ocean, winter sea ice, formation of fast ice pollinias, and riverine heat influx. Now, let's kind of break down what they're talking about here. This region is warming up. It is warming up. That's basically what they're saying. And that the second decade of this century is even warmer. So why is that? Very simple. We have warm water coming in through the Fram Strait. And when it comes into the Fram Strait, the circulation pattern is in this direction as I'm moving the cursor and so on. So it comes over to the Eurasian side, warming up the water there. And that warmer water, of course, is causing uh, you know, thermogenic releases of methane, biogenic releases of methane on the, you know, on the shelf. Also... Remember, we have warm water intrusion from the Pacific side. 
If that comes in here, tends to go, flows over to the American side, North American side, but that influences will influence the Chuck Chi C. So that's overall what's going on. But now, what do, else do they say? Closely connected to the disappearance of ice cover. Yes. Latent heat from the ocean is diffusing upward, melting the ice, preventing ice from forming. That heat continues to diffuse into the atmosphere, warming the atmosphere, warming the region in general, which then has a positive feedback loop of warming the ocean, right? One of the main factors were the thermal and dynamic effects of the atmosphere. Thermal, right? Warming up the atmosphere, the heat from the ocean, all being dynamically affecting what's going on. Less ice, less, al less albedo, more absorption of sun energy. Right? We all know that. Among the state of the ocean uh, and winter sea ice, okay, we have the formation of fast ice plinias. Plinias are basically open waters in the middle of, a, of sea ice. And riverine heat influx. We got rivers pouring in here, like here, here, right here. Right? We got rivers pouring in. Those rivers, because they're pouring in, they're liquid, which means they're what? They're above freezing, bringing in heat. So what this basically shows is how everything is interconnected. That's what that's the take home message from here. What the atmosphere is doing, what the ocean is doing, what the currents are doing, what the sea ice is doing or lack of, all con it work in conjunction to, uh, for the ever increasing warming of the Arctic, not just atmosphere temperature wise, but oceanic sea surface temperature wise as well. Other things to take into account is what is the Pacific Decadal Oscillation doing? What is the Arctic Dipole doing? Those have uh, effects on it depending on the, the phase that they are respectively in. In other words, it would be like moderating. Give you an example. This past winter in Alaska, we had about 45 below snap here in, in Alaska. Now, yes, when you look at what's going on in Alaska, temperatures are cooler than they have been for the average of the last 20, 30 years or so. So why this nice little cold snap and so forth? A number of factors came together. This, uh, the state of the Arctic Dipole was favoring high-pressure system over Alaska, so basically blocking any low pressure system, which could bring clouds and, and clouds bring warming temperatures. Think of it as a blanket. Uh, the negative phase of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, a cooler uh, Northeast Pacific Ocean. And the ocean Pacific Ocean is in a La Nina phase, kind of a strong one. So all those three working together help create a, a cooler than usual situation. But here's the thing. When compared to historical averages, we're still warmer. In other words, yeah, we're, we're kind of cool for, for a bit. But if you take these factors as they were and bring us back to 1970, 1960s, and those decades, instead of being 45 below, it would have been 55 to 60 below. So let's look through some of these uh, figures here. Okay. And uh, uh, let me uh, back up. I can, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. So this is the, you know, the area of uh, yeah, Novaya Zemlya, all right? This is the bathymetric chart here. So the very deep blue here, that's very deep uh, waters. This is, of course, in uh, meters. And uh, so you can see shallow shelf uh, right here. And uh, this is the red line shows the isobath of 45 meters. 
In other words, this red line here, the depth is 45 meters. Right? You couldn't get the, the scale quite down to that. But that this is 40, 45 meters. So it's uh, quite shallow, this whole uh, region here. Okay. This is uh, showing some uh, temperature time series. And it's a little hard to read here, but uh, basically the darker the... Uh, okay, this is the bathymetric charts here. And this is showing uh, the effects of riverine input right here, bringing in the warm water, all color enhanced. Uh, unfortunately, it's... You know, this looks like uh, cyclical seasonal temperatures here. It's uh, too small for me to read, so I apologize for that. Um, the same thing here. It's going to be difficult to read, uh, for me at least. Um, again, this is showing, uh, again, some changes in the temperatures. And the MHW is marine heat waves. So basically... The more in, in uh, orange and red is, the more intense was the heat wave, indicating warmer water conditions. And as you can see, it goes from 2016 to 2020. And um, so the left column, that's this one here, is the annual mean intensity. Central column is the maximum. And... The right hand column is total duration. Look at 2020 and 2019. Considerably warmer. Had a marine heat wave going on. Here's just showing some like uh, like a riverine influence uh, coming in. More of that. And this is what's going on with the ice. Here's the ice. You see how the Eurasian side pretty much gets almost ice-free. Now, the white ice is uh, the thicker ice. The blue ice is basically a greasy, frazzle ice. This is ice just forming. And even up to the turquoise, that's basically ice that, you know, is about one to two years of age, maybe three but this is very young ice, which tends not to persist. But look at this, right? And we, and we, I've explained to you why this, why this is, why we have all this open water here, warm Atlantic water, warm Pacific water. And these uh, marine heat waves present in terms of mean normal, uh, mean monthly temperatures, excess above the ninety percent threshold in summer from 2018 to 2020. You can see July, August, September. Remember, oceanic uh, summer is considered to be September. And as we can see here, uh, 2020 is showing to be the warmest year. Now, this is an interesting chart. Changes in the mean monthly air temperatures over the Siberian Arctic Sea from July through October, all right? for the 1960s up to 2020. So basically over 60 years. So A is the Kara Sea, B is the East Siberian, C is the Chukchi, D is the Laptev Sea from 70 to 75 degrees north, as is also E from the Laptev Sea, oh, excuse me, 70 to 75 and then 75 to 80. So this is 70 to 75 degrees uh, north latitude, and this is 75 to 80. As we can see, the LAPTEV has shown the greatest warming. And in October, we can expect things to start cooling down. So when we look at B, the East Siberian Sea, we can see that September, which is the summertime in the ocean is warming up but look here c is the one i'm interested in the chuck cheese sea look how much warmer that is that's because we have the direct influence of the pacific water moving in 
by the time the water comes in through the Fram, and by the time it gets over to the East Siberian, it's cooled down a bit. But there's so much, uh, there is enough energy, warm energy, to keep the ice from forming at a typical time. So it forms later in the year, it melts it early in the year. And at, at this point now, the Barents, way over on the Atlantic side, is pretty much ice-free year-round. So this is a chart where you can see how much warmer the conditions are month by month. So this is July, August, September, October. Those four months. Okay. I like this one here, Eastern Component of the Monthly from June to October. So June, July, August, September, October. So we're going across these five years. So you can track month by month for each year. So what's it doing in uh, July of 2016? Okay. It's that color here. So that responds to uh, basically, uh, you know, we're looking at the sea level pressure. And when you then look at the, this is the carrot elapsed at East Siberian Sea. And then, so we can follow within a year from month to month. We can look at a month and follow it across the years. And a look at the changes there. So this is showing a pressure gradient. In other words, a way of measuring sea surface height. Here we see the difference in monthly sea surface temperatures. And then the impact of rivering heat inflow. There it is. Rivers are getting warmer to bring that heat into the ocean. Another contributing factor to the loss of sea ice, and allowing the waters to absorb more sun energy. So the take-home message is uh, it's getting much, much warmer on the Eurasian side of the Arctic Ocean. And with that extra warmth, you know, the region is going to be warming up. That warmth is going to cause, is helping contribute to the increased methane releases. And things that mod modify this are going to be what is the Arctic Dipole doing, what's the Pacific Decadal Oscillation doing, and uh, what's ENSO doing. All these work together. Remember, the ocean and the atmosphere are a coupled system. So, I uh, want to bring you this uh, little uh, abstract here, kind of summing up the, what's happened in the Arctic Ocean for the last 20 years. It's getting warmer. It's one thing to think it, it's another thing to verify it. Until next time. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.